Good evening and good Memorial Day. Today means so much to anyone who's lost someone in wartime service to the country. It's a day to remember their sacrifice, but also to honor the commitment that we all share from the commander in chief on down to the men and women who are serving right now all around the world. Vice President Pence marked the day by visiting Arlington National Cemetery, where he spoke of efforts to resolve the nuclear standoff with North Korea. More than 33,000 American servicemen and women died in the Korean conflict. Some are buried here, and as you know, it's a war that never formally ended. Right now, approximately 30,000 U.S. troops are stationed in South Korea, with more than twice that number posted to Japan in part to deter Kim Jong-un, because Japan and South Korea are allies. They're our friends. North Korea is a dangerous adversary, which you'd think would be too obvious to even mention. Yet today, just as he did over the weekend, President Trump sided with the adversary over the allies. And he did it on the home soil of one of those allies, Japan. It began on Saturday, the president reacting on Twitter to North Korean testing of short-range missiles earlier this month. And I'm quoting now from the president, North Korea fired off some small weapons, which disturbed some of my people and others, but not me. I have confidence that Chairman Kim will keep his promise to me, and also smiled when he called Swamp Man Joe Biden a low IQ individual and worse. Perhaps that's sending me a signal. Now, keep in mind, it's just on the military question, these weren't exactly pop guns, as the president seems to suggest. According to a recent report from the Congressional Research Service, the testing may be intended to improve North Korea's ballistic missile fleet, which is a bad thing for the South, for Japan, and of course for the United States, for the world. One more bad thing, as National Security Advisor John Bolton told reporters over the weekend, the testing violates a UN Security Council resolution. So there's that, choosing to believe a nuclear-armed adversary over his own hand-picked National Security Advisor. There's doing it while visiting an ally, one which falls within missile range of North Korea, one hosting tens of thousands of U.S. troops and many more American civilians. And compounding it all, the president also tried to enlist this dictator into what exactly? Denouncing a political rival? Whatever he did in that tweet, he did it again today. Does it give you pause at all to be appearing to side with a, a brutal dictator instead of with a fellow American, the former Vice President Joe Biden? Well, Kim Jong-un made a statement that Joe Biden is a low IQ individual. He probably is, based on his record. Uh, I think I agree with him on that. But at the same time, uh, my people think it could have been a violation, as you know. I view it differently. I view it as a man. Perhaps he wants to get attention. And perhaps not. Who knows? It doesn't matter. Who knows? It doesn't matter. You know what? The President of the United States should know. And that does matter. And if the President doesn't know, he should take his fingers off the Twitter machine and maybe pick up a briefing book and do something that we all know he rarely does, which is read. The President still acts like he is a powerless real estate developer in New York lying about building height and who he's dating and calling up gossip columnists using pretend names to crow about his sexual prowess. The president is acting like a bystander to everything that's going on. Eh, who knows what's, who knows what's going on? Believe me, it doesn't matter. Believe me. Now, on the one hand, you might say this is just one of the president's vocal tics. It doesn't matter. Like, eh, we'll see what happens. But keep in mind, what if this is really what he believes? What if, in what he's saying and how he's jumbling it all up with domestic politics, the president is essentially indifferent to the rest, that he really believes it doesn't matter. For instance, whether or not North Korea is violating international law and working to make its nuclear missiles more lethal, eh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter that by letting the North slide on short-range missiles, he's sending a message to South Korea and Japan that the United States is only looking out for itself and not them, and signaling to North Korea it can do whatever they want because the president believes a brutal dictator wouldn't break a promise to Donald J. Trump. I mean, sure, he might have his family member, top general, executed with an anti-aircraft gun, but he certainly wouldn't lie to Trump. Not after Trump made him that promo video that was straight out of Team America. Or maybe he's, he's signaling that it just doesn't matter what you say at the State of the Union to the grieving parents of an American, not a warm beer, who was killed at the hands of Kim Jong-un. Tonight, we pledge to honor Otto's memory with total American resolve. We need only look at the depraved character of the North Korean regime to understand the nature of the nuclear threat it could pose to America and to our allies. Total American resolve. 
Remember the resolve he was going to mantle. He was going to take on the mantle of the shutdown. He was he was going to own that. That didn't last very long. Resolve. It's not a word he uses or actually lives by very much. The State of the Union, that was back in January of last year. It sure sounds like North Korea's actions mattered back then, just like they mattered to every president going back to Harry Truman. They were, after all, what millions fought against and 33,000 Americans died for. The president standing in the House chamber last year, he sure sounded like he understood that. Now, he seems to believe that he and Kim are both just a pair of real estate tycoons or something, and, and the North is just another business opportunity. It's located between Russia and China on one side and South Korea on the other. And it's all waterfront property. It's a great location, as we used to say, in the real estate business. And I think he sees that. Yeah. He, he thinks Kim Jong-un views the future as just great, you know, lots to sell of waterfront property. So maybe it's the business the president sees like that, or perhaps it's just love. I was really being tough, and so was he. And we would go back and forth, and then we fell in love, okay? No, really. He wrote me beautiful letters, and they're great letters. We fell in love. I'm not even going to address that. Uh, look, I'm glad he has love in his life. But it's the very next line that I think is actually more revealing about what really motivates the president, what Kim Jong-un seems to have managed to tap into. Now they'll make, they'll say, Donald Trump said they fell in love. How horrible, how horrible is that? So unpresidential. And I always tell you, it's so easy to be presidential, but instead of having 10,000 people outside trying to get into this packed arena, we'd have about 200 people standing right there. That, I mean, that would be like death. Can you imagine that? For him, that would be like death. And th there it is. In that moment, it is plain to see President Trump telling us all that whatever it may mean to the country he was elected to govern, he measures success by the number of people showering him with adulation. At times, 10,000 screaming fans or sometimes maybe just one fat little dictator with blood on his hands and missiles in his arsenal. We're now from CNN's Pamela Brown with the president in Tokyo. Pamela, do you have any better sense of why President Trump thought it appropriate to use Kim Jong-un's own words as a way to go after former Vice President Biden and what the response has been? Well, he was asked about this directly here in Tokyo, and his response was simply that he agreed with Kim Jong-un about his assessment regarding Joe Biden. But it also is a reflection, Anderson, of just how focused President Trump is on Joe Biden. Uh, we know from sources that he views him as a formidable a challenger. So while even he, while he's on foreign soil here in Japan, Biden is clearly on his mind. Even this morning, he was tweeting about him. Uh, talking about a crime bill in the 90s that Biden supported and how that could hurt him among African-American voters. And so the president went as far as siding with a murderous dictator, Kim Jong-un, to go after a former vice president. But the president seemed to dismiss the criticism here. And what you're seeing is a pattern as well, where President Trump seems to put stock in what Kim Jong-un tells him. As you'll recall, uh, when he was asked about Otto Warm Warmbier and whether uh, Kim Jong-un should be held responsible for that. President Trump said that Un told him he didn't know anything about it and that he took him at his word, as you laid out as well. He's talked about this love affair between the two, that they exchanged letters. And in regards to uh, the recent short-range missile testing, President Trump has also downplayed that as well, even while he's here, again, on foreign soil in Japan that views North Korea and those short-range missiles as a direct threat. Uh, President Trump saying that he didn't view those tests as a, a violation of the U.N. Security Council resolution, resolution, which is, of course, at odds with not only his host here, Prime Minister Abe, but his own national security advisor, yeah. John Bolton.